located just outside Tel Aviv. Israel's Riemann in prison employs some of the world's most technologically advanced security systems. But even those can't always beat the street skills. Picked up by inmates like Abed Bakir. You know, sometimes I get to a place that is forbidden to smoke. So they say to me, don't smoke in here I say, I, with a cigarette. I said, okay. And they think that I throw it. And it's in my hand. <laughs> Bakir's sleight of hand skills have proven useful in other ways as well. Sometimes, you know, I saw uh, officers in the jail that I took them mobiles and they didn't feel and I gave it back. So when I bring it back, just they laugh and they say thank you. <laughs> they don't have it, another choice. But Bakir is not in Riemannim for pickpocketing. He is serving a 30-year sentence for murder. Yet still has an easygoing relationship with officers whose cell phones he occasionally pilfers. Having worked on lockup for a while now, the relationship that Abed had with the staff at Ramonim was remarkable to me. There's still the division between the officers and the inmates, but there was just a friendliness about it. It was like watching two neighbors greet each other. They would shake hands. And in an American prison, we just don't see that. There's a lot more animosity from the inmates towards the officers. One reason why is that even while Riemannian inmates are considered to be among Israel's most violent criminals, rehabilitation is a major goal of the prison. I think that one of the keys of understanding the Israeli prison system and why inmates live so comfortably with each other, even in a maximum security prison like Rimonim, is understanding the size of Israel and the fact that Israel is a really small country. Those inmates, one day, are going to return to society, and the prisons don't want to release hardened angry prisoners out there because they will have to live with each other they will have to live within the small Israeli society uh, we treat the prisoners in a respectful manner we treat them as human beings and nowhere is that respect and trust better demonstrated than in the staff cafeteria corrections officers eat here every day and the food is all prepared by inmates the officers were not at all concerned about the inmates tampering with their food. Not a single officer expressed fear. They had complete trust. And they even were complimentary of the food. Inmates also cooked the three daily meals provided to other inmates. But most Rimani inmates, including Wadia Abu Amar, cooked for themselves with the food they purchased from the canteen in kitchens located in each housing unit and in some cases, inside individual cells. The food is reasonable. Let's put it like that. We don't like everything. We usually improve the food they give us. They bring, for instance, turkey breast sometimes. We take it, make it with onion, mushrooms, vegetables, make it like a kind of stir-fry. I'm cutting with a piece of metal because we don't have knives here. Knives are forbidden, so we improvise. I don't want the deputy to see me. <laughs> Seeing Abu Omar and his friends cooking in prison made us feel more like we were in a fraternity house rather than a maximum security prison. He was always laughing and playing around with his friends in the cell. <laughs> but when we asked him to speak about his crime, that brought us back to the reality that we are in a maximum security prison and we are dealing with a different set of cultural issues. Abu Omar is serving 27 years for murder. The victim was his sister and the crime was considered a family honor killing. He grew very serious. He told us it was the first time he has ever spoken about his crime.